So you may have heard of a Jewel Thief circuit, and what it does is it takes a 1.5 volt battery, so a AA battery, and converts that voltage into a 3 volt potential so you can power a white LED. So you could just think of that as magic if you like, but I prefer to know how a circuit works. So I'm going to show you the basic operation of the circuit so you'll have a better understanding of magic. <laughs> All right, let's take a look. So here's the circuit, and the first thing you'd want to take a look at are the components, because each one is very important. So first component here is a transformer. It's one-to-one -one ratio, and the primary and secondary are 180 degrees out of phase from one another. So if the primary signal was a sinusoidal waveform like this, the secondary would be a sinusoidal waveform like this. So they're 180 degrees out of phase from one another. So this would be the primary and this would be the secondary. So that's going to be important later in the circuit, but for now we don't need to worry about that. Okay, and the next component would be the 1K ohm resistor, which goes to the base of your NPN transistor. And then there is the white LED, which has the approximate voltage drop of 3 volts. So when a circuit's a little complicated, I like to view it from the point of view of an electron. So there are three pathways here, but I can only take one pathway because I'm only at a 1.5 volt potential. I would need to be 3 volts to get past this LED. I can't go through the collector emitter junction because the base hasn't been stimulated and then there's only one path left and that's through the base of the transistor. So I can climb over that 0.7 volt wall there because I'm 1.5 volts. So the first stage of this circuit would be going through the base here. So let's use blue for stage one. So that would be the first path I would be able to take. All right, and when that occurs, there's a slight delay because of the hysteresis of the uh, iron core within the transformer here, but shortly thereafter, opening this base junction here, the collector emitter junction would be open. So stage two, which I'll use purple for, would be coming up here and going through the secondary of the coil through the collector emitter junction and then back to the negative. And when this occurs, this current here going through the secondary would negate the initial base current. So that would actually turn off the transistor. And when the transistor turns off, the inductor wants to keep pushing current because they oppose a change in current. So in order to get through that transistor, it'll step up its voltage to keep that current constant. And when it steps up that voltage, it will eventually achieve that three volt potential required to overcome the three volt wall here. So the third stage would be going through the white LED. And eventually, the energy stored up in that coil will exhaust itself, and then there will be nothing to oppose the current that was running through the primary side of the transistor. So the base will open again, and then the purple current will go, and then orange can go, and so on and so forth. So, there you go. Hopefully that all made sense. And now I'm going to take some voltage measurements using my oscilloscope at varying points in the circuit so you can see what I've just demonstrated is true in practical circuitry. Okay, I've attached oscilloscope probes to the base of the transistor and to the anode of the LED, so the positive side of the LED. And if we take a look at it on the oscilloscope, 
All right, so this is channel one, the probe that is attached to the LED's voltage. And this is at one volt per vertical division. So this voltage spike here, which the inductor has caused, is well over three volts. It's around four volts at peak, and then it drops down to three, and then down to two. So in that range is where the white LED turns on. Now if we take a look at channel two, this is the base of the transistor and its ground point is right here in the center so you can see it reaches that 0.7 volt potential turns on and then suddenly turns off and spikes off so if we look at the two together you can see when this is on the LED is off and as soon as the transistor turns off the LED turns on in a very massive spike so that's pretty good evidence that what I showed you in that diagram is accurate alright well thanks for watching if you have any questions please let me know I hope I can answer them